Hey, 11th grade, it's Tuesday. Uh, let's see, April 28th. And here we are again talking about the ACT. Now, I guess you realize that I've been an ACT tutor, paid professional for eight years at Providence Academy. And I want to read a note. This is one of many notes that I've gotten because I asked my students, if after taking my class, you improve your score, it might be a nice little feather in my hat if you just send me an email. This is one example of the emails that I've gotten. This girl says, I just wanted to thank you for your great help during the ACT class. I raised my science score nine points from my previous test and science went from my worst score to my second best score. And by the way, she's doing great in college. She's in her, let's see. Yeah, she's just about finished. All right, um, did I tell you that the secret to success is not gonna be found in going to, I'm sorry, ACT Academy and watching, uh, playing video games or watching video clips. The secret to success is hard, sweaty labor on your part. I said to buy one of these books, didn't I? But you know, just buying the book doesn't do a bit of good unless you get in there and you pour through it. And every question you get wrong, you look at their explanations as to why that is the right, the, the right question answer is the right answer. And you'll understand what you should have been thinking. But it's all a matter of how much time you want to spend with it. And by the way, every point that you can get up on your score, every question, every one question you can answer extra correctly is going to bring your score up. Let's take a look at this. Before I do that, what I did was I took yellow tabs and I tabbed each one of my tests in this booklet. You can see, if you look, there's a bunch of tabs. And not only did I do that, but I test, I clipped the score conversion chart. The table that allows me, well, this is the one I want right there. Or conversion, the table that tells me what I really want to know. And that is, if I got this many questions correct, then what's my ACT score going to be? And so they keep uh, that tabulated. And you can see right here that on this score conversion chart, you got science way over on this side, and then your score for the ACT exam over here. If you get 21, is that what that is? I'm gonna go ahead and say 31. If you get 31 out of 40 questions correct, then you're gonna get this score over here. Am I pointing at the right thing? And that score looks to me like a 27 on the ACT. You got nine wrong and you still got a 27. That's pretty good. I mean, like, what does it take to get into UT? I don't know, 21? Uh, what does it take to get into ETSU? I don't know, 20? I'm not sure. Um, and so, so this is a real helpful thing. If you get one more question right uh, over here, boom, it jumps up one more, but not always does it. Sometimes you have to get two quests, two more questions right to jump up your ACT one point. And the way they do that is, because they take all their data from across the country, thousands and thousands of people who have taken this exam, and they put them on a bell curve. I don't know what that is. Ask Mr. Peters. Okay, uh, this is what another science test might look like. Here are the questions. Okay. Um, here's one. One that I happen to uh, doctor up a little bit. 
Now this is uh, out of the practice book that I just showed you. And it tries to help you to understand the three different types of science passages. But here you can see, you got yourself a bomb caloremia. You don't even have to know what that thing is. You got table one up there, and I believe you got table, oops, that's two. Table one's down here, table two is up there, and table three's right there. And it says in question one, it says according to table one and two, uh, as the mass of the successive sucrose samples increases, what about the change in the water temperature? Well, as the mass goes up on table two, as the mass of sucrose goes up, you can see right here, you're gonna put more kilojoules of heat into the water. That makes the water temperature go up, duh. And so you took, you pick that uh, one that says, it increases only. It does not decrease. It does not increase and then decrease. Uh, it does not remain the same. The temperature goes up. It increases only. When you pour more joules, have more mass, therefore more joules of energy. And you can see, oh, by the way, look at this graph right here. You know what that's called? It's called a direct relationship. As X gets bigger, Y gets bigger. As X gets a little bigger, Y is going to get a little bigger. On this, this is a direct relationship, but then it levels off, so there's no change. Now, I want to talk to you about those changes, because they're going to ask about things like that all the time. I've drawn this picture. I could draw it on the board behind me, but maybe you can see this. I'm not entirely sure. But you can see that this is money in the bank, and this is time. Year number one, year number two year number three and that kind of thing. So what's happening here? Is your money in the bank going up on a steady rate? Yeah, it is. Does it level off for a year? So if there is no change in the money in the bank. And then what about this? Is this the best growth? That's the steepest slope. Therefore, it is the greatest growth. But the greatest amount is different from the greatest growth. And so when you see the amount up here, that answer is this year you had the greatest amount. What is that, year three? I can't read backwards. And, and this is the greatest growth, like between year two and year three. It's the greatest growth, but the year three is the greatest amount. And after that, the amount went down. And so that was a decline. That's a negative growth. Uh, anything that's Positive growth is going uphill. Anything that's negative growth is going downhill. Sometimes they go ahead and they plot more than two things on a graph. And I wanted you to see what that looks like. Here's a graph where they have temperature on the curve. But on the x-axis is wavelength. And on the y-axis is light intensity. You know, kind of like brightness. So the brightness of a bulb uh, is greater. Let's see. When the temperature, see the curve, temperature one, temperature two, temperature three. When the temperature is higher, the intensity is brighter. Uh, but also the wavelength. When the wavelength is bigger, bigger wavelength, the intensity of the light is lower. This is kind of like radio waves. This is kind of like gamma radiation or real hot stuff, you know? Uh, so it is lower wavelength, smaller wavelength, but higher frequency. But you don't have to know all that. You just have to know how to do a threefold factor graph, three variables. All right. And you look for trends and that kind of thing. Well, I'm thinking I've uh, probably talked to you enough. Hopefully I've talked you into actually working at it and, and doing a good score. Every time you come in and look at your assignment for that day, next week on Monday and Tuesday, you'll have an assignment also. It's still in the LMS, look in there for a video link. If I wanna give you a video, I will. If not, I'll say on there, I will not be doing a video today. Just go straight to the assignment 
on uh, ACT Academy. But if I give you a video link, I want you to go and watch my video, please. I think I got some things I got to say that are important. All right, see ya.